This is the progress update on my self-developed 1400cc two-stroke 90 degrees V-twin engine. I've been working on it since July and I spent the entire last month learning how to design the crankcase and the transfer port surface in CAD. Now I'll show you how I did it and I go through each stage step by step. As you saw in my last video about the V-Twin project, I finished the whole gearbox and all the surfaces I have to know. And the next thing is to make actually the crank housing. To make the crank housing, I have to know the exact bolt down surface of the cylinder. Making this surface took actually a month. But honestly, I wasn't working every day on it. Most of the time I made videos with my triple bike and also built this desk for my CNC machine. Videos about this soon. And so making this surface took about a month. But now it's finished. I made in total 8 prototypes. I want it to be as perfect as it can actually be. And it is now. I show you. Making this surface perfect was everything but an easy task. Like in the gearbox I started with making a drawing with every point I need to know and then I gave my colleague the cylinder and he CNC measured every point I made in the drawing. Then I made this first prototype. As you see the surface is a lot smaller than the cutout in the cylinder. I made this design and there followed a bunch of other prototypes and this is the final design. As you can see it fits absolutely perfect. This is an original 700cc two-stroke cylinder gasket. And as you can see the gasket is not that precise as I thought it would be. A uh, part of the gasket is covering up the transfer ports. And to make this even more visible when I put my surface on here you can actually see this is part of the gasket and this is just covering up the transfer ports. My measured surface is definitely more precise than the original gasket. This is absolutely spot on in every detail. And also the radius of every corner is absolutely perfect. And also down there. It took a lot of time, as you can see, but it was actually worth it, because I want my engine to be as precise as possible. The goal is, with my technical understanding I have in 10 or 20 or 30 years, I still want to think I am not able to build this engine better than now. I have this surface as perfect as it can ever be. The next thing is to build uh, just the crank housing where the crankshaft sits, not the gearbox, just this crank housing. I also want to make this corner down here uh, more smooth. I think it restricts the flow a little bit. Here you can see it even better that this uh, corner down here is a little bit in the way of the air fuel mixture when it goes into the transfer ports. And also when you see here the machining of the case doesn't match 100% the machining of the cylinder. This could be also a little bit better. The next goal is measure the whole crank housing. I have already started this and then uh, print out the both sides of the engine. I don't know exactly how I want to make this surface down here, the transfer ports. I don't know exactly how I make this in a CAD software, but I think I will figure it out soon. A month have passed since the video clip you just saw. After determining the exact cylinder flange surface area, I determined the flange surface area of the reed valve. That was much easier because it's a very simple surface. Next I had to consider at what angle I should position the cylinder relative to each other and at what angle the reed valve inlets should be located relative to the cylinders. First I want it to look like the reel that I made. So about 60 to 70 degrees. But this angle presents two problems. First it would be impossible to machine the surface for the reed valve inlets. It's impossible to machine it like this because uh, when you look in here there are bolts for the reed valve and at this angle the mill for the CNC is not able to get in here because this part is in the way. And the second problem is a 90 degree angle is much better suited for balancing and reducing engine vibrations. 
It's no coincidence that almost all two-stroke V engines have a 90 degree angle. Therefore I'm now using a 90 degree angle as well. Next I wanted to set the reed valve intake to 90 degrees as well. I made many prototypes for this, but the problem as I discovered is that the intake in the crankcase becomes narrower due to this angle. That would cost me power. Therefore I will use the original angle of 8 degrees. Now I knew where I wanted to go, but now I have to draw all of this in a CAD system. At first I had absolutely no idea how to draw these organic surfaces. I tried cutting out the transfer ports from the part using the loft tool. That worked, but not well. I also tried the sweep tool, but it didn't work out either. The problem was the shape of my transfer ports was very complex. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos and chatted with people who drawn something uh, similar before and ask a lot of questions to ChatGPT how to draw this surface. Finally I came with the solution. Instead of cutting the surface out of a solid body, I used a lot of surface modeling tools to draw the entire inner surface of the crankcase surface by surface until I had the finished enclosed solid. Then I used the boolean subtract tool to cut the surface out of the surface from the crankcase. This prototype was downgraded from that. That worked out well in the end and I was satisfied with it. But I wasn't happy with the surface. There is too little meat and now I can draw it even better. Then I drew this second prototype. I then tried how it would look with this fin in here. But the problem here is that the diameter of the intake is significantly reduced. Furthermore, I'm still using the 90 degree inlet angle and you can see how tight it is compared to the original. And I've also noticed that this height is wrong here when you compare this to the original one. And so I started with the third prototype. I then printed this surface from the side view of the spline of the transfer port radius. I did this for the side view in the middle and for the side view of the spline at the beginning. And with all those additional informations I made this prototype. Now I'm satisfied with this prototype. Next is to disassemble the mini bike and remove the engine. Then I disassemble that too. Then I have two Tabel ZM29 cylinders and crankshafts ready for my engine. But I have another idea. There's a newer revised cylinder called the ZM30. Since I can just about afford it, I wanted to buy two of these cylinders with pistons and the corresponding crankshaft from Apex Offroad where I've already bought all the other parts. But then I stumbled around TR Tech by chance. I simply searched on Google for Zabel. Incidentally, that was exactly how I first found and then bought the minibike at the beginning of April this year. So I contacted this company and told them about my project. They found my idea really impressive and now I'm in contact with them because they have important data for me regarding the engine and later the exhaust. Anyway, I saw this company knows a lot about these engines and rebuilds and improved them after racing. I saw that they've also built 750cc versions with a larger bore. Anyway, I've asked them if there's a bigger version than the 750cc and they said yes. They had already built versions with a 104mm bore and a 91 stroke, totaling 773cc. For comparison, the original engine has a 100mm bore and a 89mm stroke, totaling 699cc. The 773cc version is very rare and only a handful have ever built because it's outside the sidecar regulations, but that's totally irrelevant for me. I then ask if it would be possible to buy such a setup. Anyway, now I'm getting two new Zabel ZM30 cylinders with a 104mm bore with matching forged custom pistons and two crankshafts with a 91mm stroke. But that's a total of 1546cc two-stroke. But I'm waiting to make the official announcement until I had the parts in my hands. So I can redo everything you see here. I'll get the Zabel ZM30 cylinder and crankcase half for now to develop the final crankcase until my cylinders are finished. 
this is the last drawing, the fourth prototype, but also the best one. All of this to build a motorcycle unlike any other, one that puts everything in its shade. It is currently 0.34 in the morning, everybody is out partying and drinking and I'm sitting alone at home and talking to myself. I really hope this engine will work. Now at the end of this video a little bit of a real talk or I mean I have a few things I want to say. Uh, the first thing is uh, developing this crankcase or achieving the skills was one hell of a work. I was sick so I didn't have to go to work and I think I spent one week at least eight hours a day learning how to draw just this surface. This was by far the hardest thing I have ever drawn. I mean that's not that big of a deal because I started making CAD models I think was a half a year ago and now I am at this point I think that's uh, pretty good. At the time I was drawing or uh, figuring out how to draw the crankcase I had the idea of my YouTube banner that I have right now. In the background you can see the triple bike and at the front there is the saying exceed your limits. And this is exactly what I did with this crankcase. I have exceeded my limits. This was an amazing experience. And it's also a very motivational saying. It reminds me of an anime called uh, Black Clover, where the main character, every time he has a villain he couldn't defeat, during the fight he had to exceed his limits to defeat the enemy. And uh, in my case the enemy was the crankcase, but now I have the skills and I know exactly how to draw this thing. Also for the VTRAN project no expense or effort is spared. I spent all my money I earned with YouTube, I mean that's not uh, two, three hundred dollars a month. I spent this whole money and all the money I earned with my 9 to 5 job, all of my money I spent in this project. And I hope it works. <laughs> it was exactly the same with the triple bike. I was building this engine and engineering it and then built the bike and until the bike started up the first time I didn't know if the engine even works. This this was absolutely crazy. I spent I think 8, 9, 10k for the whole bike and I didn't know if the engine even works. This was crazy. And it's also a bit the same on this project. The main difference is this project doesn't cost 10k, it will cost tens of thousands of euros. It's crazy. And all of this I do just for one reason. Uh, or for two reasons. At first I'm really keen on and I discovered I'm, I think I'm good at it. And the next thing is I wanted to escape my 9 to 5 job. I'm currently working in a BMW dealership. I am the manager of the car body shop and I hate going to work every day because I want to make this shit full time. I want to build crazy engines and develop bikes. I mean you have to keep in mind I built a triple bike. It's just uh, basically three engines stuck together in the most engineered way possible. But most of it are just Chinese parts and the engine. It's it's not that easy to develop, but it's not a crazy high-tech NASA engineering thing. Compared to this engine, this engine is really, really tough to make and to engineer. After the triple bike, I could have made uh, another little engine. I have an idea for a boxer engine or a radial. A radial. This, this will be a crazy idea maybe in the future. After the triple bike making this engine and have this bike in my mind is just absolutely crazy. And one of the reasons I'm doing this, the first is I'm extremely keen on this thing and the second is uh, it's my business idea. As simple as that. I have the idea if the engine works out well maybe I make enough money from YouTube to quit my 9 to 5 job and make crazy shit like this full time. When I have enough subscribers maybe make some merch. I have so many nice ideas for t-shirts or trousers or hoodies. Also developing engines like this cost money, a lot of money. This cylinder for example 2k, for the piston 500 bucks, cylinder head 500 bucks, crankshaft 1.5k. This engine is extremely expensive and also like I said no expense or efforts spurred. And with this saying all you can see here uh, was just for practicing. I made the decision I don't want to use this cylinder or this crankshaft or the cylinder and crankshaft of the mini bike. 
I wanna buy two Zabel ZM30 cylinders. That's the even newer one than those cylinders and also have a little bit more power. I wanna buy two of those cylinders and also two uh, crankshafts and also two smart carbs, 40 millimeters. This is what I mean with no effort or expense spurt. I already have two cylinders and crankshafts and everything, but uh, that's not enough. There are newer 700cc Zabel cylinders out there, the ZM30 and not the ZM29 and I wanna use them in my bike. The whole surface of the cylinder down there, this was also just for practicing. I have to make another sketch in CAD where I define the exact uh, surface of the ZM30 cylinder. And this will be so much work but I hope it turns out really well and maybe someday make a living from uh, this business. I've also thought a lot of how to connect the crankshafts to each other and to the gearbox. There are three ways to connect the crankshafts. The first way is like in the Yamaha RD500. Uh, in the middle you have the clutch and on top on each side you have the cylinder and on every crankshaft is a crank gear and this crank gear is sitting on the clutch gear. So in the middle you have the clutch and left and right on top there is the crank gear. That's the first way. The second way is like the Bimota V2 or uh, Rima motors with the 600cc V2. They made a pair of gears called tandem gears and the crankshafts are connected by the gears. And at one cylinder there is another gear on the crankshaft and this gear drives the clutch. That's also a pretty nice setup but I wanna use the original Zabel crankshaft. For me there is no other way. And on the crankshaft the shaft is not long enough to install two gears on top of each other. And so there is just one way left and that's the way by connecting the two crankshafts and the uh, gearbox by a belt. Or in my case maybe two or three belts to hold up the power the cylinder gonna make. It's the most complex one and the way with the most power, but I think that's the only way how to proper connect those two crankshafts and also make the engine last longer than a thousand kilometers. Because I think connecting the cranks by belt, maybe the belt absorbs some of the energy of the two 700cc cylinders uh, working against each other and also I have seen it a lot by just people who connect multiple cylinders by a belt and it works. It has its own character and it, it works and also it looks good. You have to keep in mind on a Harley Davidson the open belt drive primary is nothing else. Just in my case there are two crankshafts and not one so I don't see any problem with this setup. The last thing I want to say is developing those engines and cutting these videos takes up almost my entire free time. I have to work in my 9 to 5 job which I hate and after my job I have to go to the gym 3 to 4 times a week and then almost my entire free time all of the weekends, all of the holidays I spent developing this engine and cutting reels or videos just for one reason, to reach my goal and uh, make a living out of my business and make crazy shit like this full time. That would be my absolute dream. I think uh, if I just continue working the way I do, I think that's absolutely possible, making a living out of the stuff I make and if I continue making crazy projects, I think it's just a matter of time. So with this said, I hope you enjoyed this video, stay tuned and see you next time.